G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for another episode of Wasteland Survival. So, in today's episode, um, we're going to do something a little bit different. So, normally what I would do is I would start the episode off with um, what, are, what we've done in the previous episode, um, and then go over what we're going to do in this episode, except for the fact that there seems to be a Reaver heading our way. So, I think what I need to do first, before we even do anything else, is actually go ahead and get some ammo into the atlas itself. So what I'm going to do here is just find a few ammo containers that I've got in my inventory here. Um, and then from there we'll place them into the atlas and hopefully we can basically get the... Um, yeah, get the Gatling guns operational. But first, I actually need to move everything that's in my inventory out of my inventory so that we can then grab some ammo and then place that into the ship. Alright, so hopefully I'll be able to place a fair bit of this stuff in there, but we'll see how we go. Um, so let's search for ammo. Alright, cool. So, let's uh, place that in there. Alright, um, so, oh, actually, what I need to do as well is just make sure that actually all these guns are even turned on. So let's just make sure that that is indeed the case. Um, the missile turrets are on. So if we have a look here, they're on and the Atlas guns are on. Fantastic. Alright, so if this guy decides to come near us, then at least we are going to be able to protect ourselves. Although... It kind of looks like... I, I kind of thought he was coming directly over that top of us. But it looks like he's going that way instead. So, yeah, I guess, um... Yeah. Alright, cool. So I think we should be alright then. <sighs> I was stressing out there for a minute. Okay, well, I think what i got to do now, though, is I actually need to... Like, you know, while we're on the subject of guns, I think what I want to do from here is basically fill up these missile launchers as you well. Blow. Yeah, of course it is. Um, and then from there, I need to basically you fill up go. these um, interior turrets as well. The only problem with the interior turrets is obviously you need to fill all of these one by one. So I'm going to have to manufacture all of the... Um, all of the components for those and then from there I'm gonna to have to dump them all into each gun individually so I can't remember exactly how many guns this thing has um, how many interior turrets but basically what I'll probably do is I'll put in about 250 um, magazines per gun so alright let's um first what I need to do though is I need to get myself some jetpack fuel without killing myself. Fantastic. Alright, so I managed to get down onto the floor without absolutely murdering myself. So, alright. Let's go and get ourselves some more fuel. Alright, cool. So, I've got myself some more fuel. So, now what I want to do is manufacture a whole bunch of magazines. Now, if I remember correctly, I think what I need to do is I need to manufacture, I believe it was these magazines here. Um, so actually, I need to figure out roughly how many guns the Atlas has, and then from there I can figure out how many um, magazines I need to manufacture. So what, we've got one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, and then we've got eight, nine, so nine, and then ten, so that's twenty if we count both sides. So I've got twenty-one small turrets, so twenty-one times two fifty, let me just work this out. So I think we need somewhere in the realm of... Okay then. So yeah, I think we need somewhere in the realm of uh, 5,250 
Oh, jeepers. Alright, so let's just see how many magazines we actually have in the base at the moment. Um, so I've got 622 there. Um, so that's in the small... That's in the shuttle small cargo. Um, we've got 483 there. We've got some in this connector. So I'll just grab all of them that I can find. So we've got about 1500 so that means we only need about 4500 so how many else do we have here so yeah I think I'm gonna need to make about 3800 thereabouts um, because we have 1500 and we need 5250 so alright let's go and manufacture all of those so gonna do yeah, we'll do 4,000. That should be enough. And then I actually have some leftovers. But while we're waiting for those things to build, um, what I will do is I will transfer some um, missiles to myself so that I can then dump them into the Atlas and then they can go into the cargo containers as well. I'll just... Um, not into the cargo containers, into the um, missile launchers. So what I'll do is I'll just find all of the missiles that I can carry and we'll move as many as we can manually. But, uh, what? Why wouldn't it let me deposit those? Oh, I think I need to manually drag them across. Alright, that's alright. So I think I might just go for um, maybe... Actually, I wonder if these missile containers like because it says missile container does a missile container contain multiple missiles or is one missile container one missile that is the question because if it's just one missile then I probably want a few more than just like you know 50 or so um, maybe I want like a couple of hundred so um, and realistically what I would love to do and what I probably should have done is actually move all of these things across when the connectors were connected or when I had that like umbilical cord connected to the ship that's probably what I should have done is move all the missiles across there in fact um these guns should have actually picked up some of that ammo from before so hang on let me just check this out so if I have 78 missiles here, then that's as many as we had before. Then how many missiles do I have in this missile launcher? Let's just check it. Alright, yeah, cool. So, turns out that the missiles actually got transported into the missile launchers, and I would imagine also that the Gatling guns are full of ammo because of when we had it connected via the um, umbilical cord. So, yeah, fantastic. Alright, so... I didn't even really need to transport all of those materials across, but unfortunately these aren't connected to any conveyors, so I will definitely have to fill these up manually. So yeah, we're going to have to wait for all of these components to be built, and then from there we can basically um, we can basically go ahead and actually place all of those into those uh, interior turrets. So, I guess one other thing that I kind of want to do um, while I'm waiting for those to be built, and I guess, you know, we can kind of make good use of our time while we're doing, um, you know, manufacturing all of those um, clips. One thing I wanted to do was I actually wanted to add some spotlights to the bottom of the Atlas. Now, I have thought about this a little bit, and I think I know roughly where I want to place them. So, I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to place one here. I'm going to place another one here. And then I'm going to place another one probably somewhere like here. So, let me just... Oh! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Wrong button. <sighs> Uh, note to self, do not shoot your own ship because it ends badly. Um, <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, so basically the reason why I want to place them here is because obviously there is a block behind them. So what, um, well, basically the reason why I want to block behind these is it's quite obvious really. I mean, 
basically these spotlights aren't airtight. So if I was to place them like say here in the hull and there's nothing above this then obviously the compartment above that would no longer be pressurized. So I needed to find a couple of spots in the hull that actually had a block behind them that I could then um, put these spotlights into. So I think that's going to be the spots that I'm going to choose for this. And even though these landing pads here have lights so that I can see them in the dark, I still think it's going to be useful to have these spotlights around um, because obviously this isn't going to be the only place that we're going to land this ship. We're obviously going to land this on other planets and it would actually be nice to be able to see the ground before we're like literally touching it. Um, so at least with the spotlights I can have them at a distance of um, or a radius of like 160 meters. So what's that that's like um, that's quite a few blocks above the ground before we actually need to see the ground so all right well let's go and place these in now the question is which way do I actually want these to be um, I think I'm gonna make them not that way but this way so we'll just go ahead and we'll place all of these in and then from there we can go ahead and we can weld them up did I actually place these in the same spot on the other side? Let me just double check this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I did. Um, Alright, so let's um, place that one there. And that one there. And while these are incomplete, what I'll do is I will find these in the, the console here. And we'll call this um, Atlas Landing spotlight one through six so let's quickly rename all of these okay fantastic so they're all renamed um, what I'm gonna do as well is I'm gonna make a group for these so Atlas landing spotlights and save and then what that will allow me to do is basically add these spotlights to the um, the hotbar in the cockpit so that then we can you know turn them on and off um, and in fact while I'm here I might as well just set all of the all of the other settings so we'll go with the traditional color 190 uh, 215 uh, radius will be the maximum the offset I'm just gonna leave that alone intensity I'll leave that alone um, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn these off by default so that when we weld these up they're actually turned off um, and actually you know what um, while we're on kind of the subject of lighting um, ever since I installed this new CPU um, the lighting has been behaving itself just a, a tiny touch better than what it was before um, and actually the frame rates have like really gotten a lot better so if we open the so if we go f11 shift f11 you can see that the fps is up around 100 frames a second um and then you know wherever we go the frame rate is you know well above what it was before so the new ryzen 7 5800x has certainly made a huge difference to this game um I mean, obviously, when I put the new graphics card in, I was able to tweak the graphics up a little bit. Um, but yeah, it seems like this game is extremely CPU intensive. Um, you know, because I mean, most games at 60 frames a second would be using barely any CPU. But this game um, is something a little bit different. So it's a, somewhat of an anomaly. So yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm really happy with how it runs now. So, all right. Well, enough babbling about my system. Let's go ahead and get these blocks welded up. All right. Well, that is all the spotlights done on the bottom of the Atlas. So now we can see what we are doing when we are trying to land the ship. So what I want to do now is... Um, okay, so I'm not sure if I mentioned this before... But basically the ship is actually a little bit further back than what I wanted it to be. So I think at the rear I wanted it to be about two blocks from here. And at the front I wanted it to be two blocks 
um, as well. So what I want to do is I basically want to move the whole thing about one block forward. And what I want to do actually is to create a connector here. And what I would usually do um, and what I used to do in all of my saves before the YouTube series is I used to actually put a piston underneath the floor that would kind of extend upwards with a connector on top and then it would kind of connect here. Now the only problem is that, well I guess there's, there's two kind of issues. So the first one is that, you know, you end up with this whole ugly mess of pipe work on the bottom of the landing pad and it doesn't really look that elegant. Um, the second issue is that you kind of need to get the ship totally lined up perfectly to the landing pad to then raise this piston upwards to then get the ship connected. And sometimes what would happen is you would get the ship landed and locked down onto the landing pad only to find out that it's not actually lined up properly. So whereas this kind of thing here where I've got a static connector um, and I utilize the magnetism of the connectors to kind of stick the ship down and if you're a little bit off it kind of pulls the ship towards it um, so and then it ends up being lined up really nicely and then what you can do is you can kind of pivot the ship um, like that way to kind of get it lined up on these um, these kind of like landing pads I would say so yeah, um, I basically want to move. Now I think, alright, so let's just um, build this here conveyor junction. And the reason why I ground it out is because it really <laughs> the conveyor label was facing the wrong way and it was just kind of messing with my head. Now the problem is that I'm not actually going to be able to build a conveyor here and then a connector on top because the ship is still Energy here. Low. So what I need to do is actually need to move the ship off of the landing pad and then over to the ground over there and then from there then I can kind of build my connector solution. So, but first before I even think about that there is another thing that I was kind of thinking about. So, um, if you guys remember in the previous episode I was using one of these large hydrogen tanks down here in the garage to kind of um, give myself some fuel for my jetpacks and I believe it was this one here so you can see that this one still has 17 and a half percent fuel left in it um, and I would kind of like to get the majority of that into the Atlas and to be perfectly honest having you know that much fuel uh, just for jetpacks is kind of excessive so I think what I'll do is I will replace that with some small hydrogen tanks. So what I'm going to do is I think I want to build a couple of small hydrogen tanks in this control um, slash command center here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to basically get rid of two of these oxygen tanks here and to be honest with you with this base the way that it is uh, seems like there's another reaver oh, I really hope he doesn't come too close to us anyway as I was saying um, because of the fact that we're on Pertam and this planet does actually contain a bit of oxygen um, I don't really need this many oxygen tanks because these oxygen tanks are constantly being replenished by the air vents out here that I have set to um, intake. So whenever these oxygen tanks are running low, these air vents are drawing in oxygen from the atmosphere and then refilling these tanks. So they're never really going to get empty. So I don't think I really need six of them. I think four should be heaps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these. And let's just place the components for these into that cargo container. And then from there, I'm going to replace these with small hydrogen tanks. And hopefully I have some of the components on me to actually build them straight away. Uh, we'll make them this color and I'm just keeping a close eye on that reaver and just making sure he doesn't get too close to us. And actually matter of fact, um, I really like these new hydrogen tanks that they added to the game. I reckon they look really nice. And um, 
kind of makes me wish that I did make a separate room for hydrogen tanks ever since they added these blocks because I think they look really, really nice. Um, yeah, so, ah oh well, it's, um, all the tanks are kind of in the garage now, so i got to kind of um, stick with that, I think. Maybe at some other stage I might build a room with more hydrogen tanks, but to be honest with you, I think we have enough hydrogen storage as it is, so I think that would kind of be overkill. Anyway, kind of getting a bit sidetracked, so let's get these tanks done. Okay, now these hydrogen tanks are built, so what we've got to do from here is basically transport the fuel from that one large hydrogen tank into these two smaller ones. But before I do that, Energy I'm going to first critical. rename these two um, hydrogen tanks. So we'll call this uh, base small hydrogen tank 1, and then we'll call the other one base small hydrogen tank 2. So, yep, we'll do that. Um, we will turn stockpile on. We'll turn the auto refill on. And this is for the bottle, so that when I place a bottle into it, then it's going to refill the bottle. So, then what we need to do is find the large hydrogen tank, which I believe was hydrogen tank number three. We're going to turn stockpile off, turn that block on, and then the fuel should start moving across. So, let's just confirm that that is indeed the case. Uh, let's have a look here. Yep, yeah, cool. So you can see that these are filling up. Um, and to be honest with you, like a million litres is even excessive. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I could honestly just get away with building one of these. But the thing is, I kind of want it to be symmetrical. So I think I'll just kind of leave the one hydrogen or one hydrogen tank on each side. And it will kind of make things look a little bit more symmetrical and a little bit nicer and I think actually I need to change some of these blocks because these blocks here are different or did I fix that already yeah I think I did fix that I can't remember when I did but I thought these blocks here were different on either side but it looks like I went ahead and fixed that anyway once again getting sidetracked right so let's um let's find these hydrogen tanks so let's go small hydrogen tank again let's select these um, we'll turn stockpile off so that they don't steal um, fuel from anywhere else in the base. Or they don't steal fuel from the Atlas once that is connected. Alright, so now let's just test these out and make sure they are working. So what we want to do is grab a bottle, place a bottle in there. And awesome, so we are now able to fill up our bottles from these. So I think what I'll do as well though is I'll actually move all of my bottles from um, all the rest of the um, tanks and O2 H2 generators to these ones here. Um, so let's transfer them across. Uh, O2 H2 generator. And then we've got another one there. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Um, okay then, that is rather freaky. Okay, alright, so now what I want to do is, oh yeah, that's right, I was building a whole bunch of ammunition to put into the interior turrets. Let's see how that's doing. Uh, let's check the, alright cool, so it looks like all that stuff is built now, so that is fantastic. Awesome, alright, so... Now what we can do is we can start actually filling all of the interior turrets with the magazines that we built. And if you guys remember in a previous episode, um, when they released the Warfare 1 update, they actually changed the magazines that you needed to put into these interior turrets. Um, and you might have noticed that just before when I was going and messing around in the inventory. So if we have a look for magazine, you can see these ones here, which is the 556 by 45 NATO magazines, they don't actually exist anymore. So you can't actually build them. And so, um, <laughs> and it's funny because they look very similar to these ones here. But um, these MR-50A magazines, the automatic rifle magazines, are the one that actually go into the interior turrets now. 
So um, now that they are all built, I'm going to basically transport all of them into those interior turrets. Um, and it is quite interesting to me, just while we're on the subject of these magazines and them being the same as each other, it is quite interesting that these, when the update was released, these didn't actually convert to these magazines here. So yeah, I do find that kind of interesting. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away now I'm gonna, and I'm going to fill um, all of these interior turrets with all of these magazines um, and then from there we can basically move the ship off the landing pad and then we can start thinking about building the connector we can start thinking about building these kind of um, oh, I would say yeah these catwalks where I have my landing gear sitting on top of um, because obviously with the magnetism of the connector the ship sits slightly above the connector and then what ends up happening is the landing gears look like they're kind of floating in midair so this just kind of like number one gives us a guide of where the landing gears should actually be and then number two also makes it look like they actually are locked to something so yeah we got to put these on as well um, and then also we need to do the thruster trenches as well and I'm not exactly sure which way I want these thruster trenches to go. Um, so we're going to have to figure that out as well. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in a second once I have filled all of these interior turrets with ammunition. Alright, guys, well, I'm back. And I finally filled all of these interior turrets with ammunition. And obviously, it's daylight at the moment. So basically... What ended up happening is I mistakenly manufactured the wrong clips for these um, interior turrets. So what I had to do was go ahead and disassemble all of the other ones, which was, you know, like 4,000 clips or magazines, whatever you want to call them. And then I had to go and remanufacture all of the new ones. So I've basically been sitting around doing nothing for... A, a fair amount of time just waiting for those things to be built so now what I can finally start doing is actually thinking about moving this thing off of the landing pad so that we can then complete the landing pad but before I do that there are a couple of things that I really want to do so um, the first thing is I kind of want to mark out where these landing gears are sitting because as I said before I kind of want to put these things here, um, these graded catwalks underneath the landing gear for the Atlas as well. So, and actually, I need to move this one back too. So, what I'm going to do though is because the Atlas is supposed to be one block further forward, or just about one block further forward, I'm going to actually mark this out by coloring these blocks in so I know roughly where to actually place my. Um, what, what am I stuck on? Oh, whoops. Um, so yeah, I actually know where to place those blocks. So yeah, cool. So that's done. Uh, the last thing I want to do here is I basically want to just kind of drill or grind out these blocks here that so that I can kind of figure out where my thruster trench is going to be. So if this is going to be one block further forward, then... Let's um let's just grind this out and see what it looks like. Cause I I really can't picture this in my head. It's kind of hard to picture. So what I wanna do is I wanna make it so that um well basically the bloom from these engines is only one block thick. So I don't really need to go too far this way. So I think what I'll do is actually let's just see where that leaves us so if the th ship moves forward then the middle of the thruster ends up here so I think I want one more block space um, apart from that so I think that's roughly where I want it and then I think also what I want to do is have it one block spaced apart from this side as well so technically that'll end up 
there on the thruster so I think I want to get rid of these blocks here this one block here as well um, and then I basically just want to kind of replicate that on the other side here um, in fact where's my hole for this side um, where is it I think I've got to go this way let me just check this so we go across here and then we end up there and then we'll go across this one to the other side and it should be about there I think yep cool that was a good guess um, so let's grind these out and then we know roughly where our thruster trenches need to be alright so the question is though I'm not sure if I really want to make thruster trenches for the front of the ship um, because like I said I don't really need them because they're, they're quite far away from the landing pad itself and I don't actually need to worry about the thrusters hitting the landing pad and damaging it um, it's more like these little thrusters here that I have to worry about but then again I'm not really too worried about them um, well mainly because of the fact that I just think having like a little square here little square here little square here and a little square here will just look kind of weird so I don't think I'm gonna worry about those if they do end up damaging the landing pad then I'll just have to kind of deal with that and fix it so anyway um, let's go ahead and let's actually move the ship off the landing pad itself so let's jump into the cockpit here let's turn on our thrusters let's disengage the landing gears and let's change our view here and yeah awesome so you can see that the ship needs to be about there so I think those in fact you know what I'm just gonna lock this down and I'm just gonna double check these um, these thruster trench locations so let's just double check this because I just want to make sure I'm actually getting this right so okay if we go up here then we end up on the edge of the thruster and if we go up here this way um, <laughs> we place a block in midair and it falls to the ground <laughs> um, yeah okay so yeah that's perfect all right so that's exactly what I want okay cool so I've got the dimensions of that one done correctly so all right let's get rid of that block that's floating in midair which is a bit strange right now let's go and move the ship and it's funny because I built those spotlights on the bottom of the atlas but I don't actually need them anymore because yeah um <laughs> I kind of messed up with the um magazines so now we don't need to do that anymore uh, crikey so all right let's um let's land this thing onto the deck Ooh, I thought this thing had more powerful thrusters than that I guess it doesn't all right so let's lock it down let's turn the thrusters off and then let's exit the cockpit and let's go and get started on this landing pad so I think the first thing I want to kind of get started on is I want to get started on this connector kind of situation here so I'm going to get rid of everything that's on my inventory change my view here because I slightly moved my camera so we'll grab the components for a conveyor junction we'll grab the components for a connector um, and then we will grab a couple of steel plates just to be safe and now so what I want to do is just place a conveyor junction here and we'll orientate this the correct way because I don't really want to mess this up or I want it to look you know as beautiful as possible I guess <laughs> even though you know a connector isn't really a beautiful looking object all right let's um well these two things up and then from there we can build some sort of a cover for this now there's a couple of ways I could do this I guess um, so in fact let's just make sure I've got the correct color selected here so I could go like that and then on top of that I could place a block like this but 
I just think that this block here is going to interfere too much with the ship and the connector. So I think what I'll do instead is I will create it like this. So we'll grab this block here. Um, and then we'll grab our little corner piece like this one here. Um, and then we'll grab the other piece like that. And then the corner piece again. And then we'll kind of go around like that so the connector is sticking out just that tiny bit. And in fact, maybe what I can do as well is um, make the connector the battered armor color just to make it look that little bit nicer. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll place these blocks here. Place this block there. And then this block there like that. And then from there we can create that block, uh, that block, and finally this block. And then we'll grab this color and then we'll make the connector that color. And then I forgot about this block here in the corner. So we'll place that there. All right, so let's quickly weld these up. Okay, fantastic. So that is everything welded up and Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, but at the same time, it doesn't look fantastic either. But you know what? We can play around with that a little bit later. So now what I need to do is kind of figure out what I'm going to do with this thruster trench here. So I think what I may end up doing is I might actually end up making this like kind of three blocks wide. Um... I was kind of toying with the idea of just making it one block wide, but I think it just doesn't really fit the kind of size of those thrusters on the back there. And you know, the landing pad is bigger and it like the proportions kind of, it just makes sense for it to be a little bit bigger. So I think that is definitely the way that I'm going to go. So um, what we'll do is we'll go, so we'll grind out all of these blocks. Okay, so that's all the blocks ground out. So that is going to be roughly the size of the thruster trench. Now, the other thing is, though, that these blocks here on the side, they're actually going to be um, the battered armor blocks or the, uh, oh, what are they called? The blast door blocks. So I'm going to have to grind these away as well and then also add the blast door blocks. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go away and I'm going to do that just quickly. Um, and once that's done, then I'll be back. All right. Well, that is all of these thruster trenches welded up. And um, yeah, it took me a little bit of um, time to do it. And I actually decided to use the welding ship. Um, I could do it by hand, but honestly, the welding ship is just going to be 10 times faster mainly because of the fact that each one of these um, blast door blocks just has an enormous amount of steel plates so using the welding ship to do that was just so much quicker um, so now all I really need to do at this point is kind of add in my um, my barriers around the side so I'll probably go away and do that although I am really, you know, reconsidering what I'm going to do with these thruster trenches at the front. I think I am actually going to go for that. Um, but how am I going to do that? So, um, yeah, you know what? What I could do, right, is I could basically um, measure it out from here but I think that's just going to take me too much time to try and count how many blocks it is to this point and how many blocks it is to this point and how many blocks back from the front of the landing gear and blah 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 I think the best way to do it is to kind of land the ship onto the landing pad and then kind of figure it out from that point onwards so um, but in order to land this thing back onto the landing pad the first thing I actually need to do is um, place down these blocks here. So let's um, let's go and withdraw a whole bunch of these grated catwalks here, and let's start placing down these like um, 
I want to say landing pad, but this entire thing is a landing pad. The landing pads on top of the landing pads. <laughs> so, you know, these these things we've got here. So, obviously we've got our yellow selected still, so... Um, and we can see that they are in a horizontal direction. So let's go ahead and place these down like that, like that, um, like that, and like that. And we'll do the same here. And then we will do the same for this one as well, because again, this is the front of the landing gear. So I basically want the front of the landing gear like that. Um, and then let's see how the rest of these blocks are orientated. Okay, so they are basically this color and it looks like they're going straight that way and then that way. So let's go ahead and place these in like this and then we'll rotate it like that, place those down like that and then we'll replicate the exact same thing on these two. But to try and save time, we will do it like this. Uh, and then we'll rotate, ah, wrong button, we'll rotate them again like this, like that, like that. Okay, fantastic. Now all that's left is we need to actually weld these blocks up. So let's quickly go ahead and do that. Alright, fantastic. So, these are all now welded up. So now what I can do is I can grab the ship and I can move it onto the landing pad and hopefully from there we can get it lined up properly and then we can kind of think about building these like thruster trenches at the front. Ah, oh, where am I going? <laughs> I was going to the front of the ship for some reason. Um, Alright, let's uh, jump into the cockpit here. Let's turn the thrusters back on. Let's unlock it from the, uh, the ground. And hopefully by doing this exercise, we don't waste that much fuel. Um, but I guess we'll just have to kind of wait and see, won't we? Right, let's um, take it relatively easy here. Although I seem to be on an angle a bit, which is strange. Because I thought I... Am I a level? Ah, yes, no. That is why the ship is not really behaving that well. Alright, so let's level out. Let's lower it down a bit. And let's see, are we centered? No, not really. Alright. I'm going to go back a bit. And yeah, you can see just how difficult it is to kind of get this thing lined up properly. Alright, so now I think we are kind of locked down on the connector. Well, not locked down, but we are like magnetized to the connector, I should say. Alright, so let's uh, lock down the landing gear. Let's turn the thrusters off. And then let's see if the connector is ready to connect. And it is, so let's connect that. Let's jump out of the cockpit and let's just go and make sure that we are indeed locked down to the ground and also locked to the connector. Alright, so the landing gears are looking pretty straight. That's very nice. The connector is connected. Very nice. And we are pretty well centered here. Very, very nice. Alright, so now we can start think about start thinking about creating the thruster trenches for this. So, um, do we go with yellow? Ah, darn it. I need some more steel plates. Uh, let's grab some more steel plates just quickly. Fantastic. All right, so now we can kind of think about, and you can kind of see like why I moved it up here because trying to count this out and trying to figure this out without the ship actually being here was just going to be an absolute pain. So, Am I at the right level here? Yeah, okay, so I think we go like that, um, and then we go one block back like that, and then we go two blocks ahead because this one's two blocks. Let's just make sure that's lined up. Yes, it is. Um, okay, fantastic. Um, and we will do the same for the other side. So let's do this again, repeat the same process as we did before. 
and I really do hope these are lined up properly. Okay, yeah, so basically these blocks represent what I'm going to cut out. So then what we need to do is around this edge here, we basically need to place our, um, our blast door blocks. Uh, I think what I'm going to do here though is I'm just going to clear everything out of my inventory and let's see how this is going to look. So what I need to do here is grind all these blocks away. But I've got to be careful because I don't want to grind all of them away. Um, otherwise what will happen is this entire thing will kind of fall to the ground. So I need to leave at least one block connecting all of these things together. Um, so that all of these blocks don't fall to the ground. So that will be that block there. So, And then what I'll do from here is we'll select our blast door blocks. Um, not that block. That block. Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Um, we will make them... Ah, I'm going to make them this dark... This kind of darker color here because it is slightly darker than the landing pad itself. There we go. All right. So let's grab that color. And let's place that on the corner here. Wait, is that the right way? No, I want to arrange that way. Okay, so let's place that there. That like that, that like that, and then that like that, that like that. Then we'll skip that one, place that one there, that one there, that one there, that one there, and then that one. Oh, oh look at that. Honestly, that couldn't have worked out better if I had have actually tried to plan it out. So, as you can see, we've got, you know, um, an awesome distribution of blocks. So, you know, I've got my black, yellow, 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 and so on and so forth. So, that worked out absolutely perfectly. And like I said, if I tried to plan that out, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So, yeah, that just, yeah, that worked out absolutely beautifully. All right. So, then what we got to do is we got to grab these ones. And obviously, we're going to make these ones yellow. And then we just got to basically place them all down like this and fill the blanks. And then from there, we basically grind out all the middle. And then this will kind of represent our uh, thruster trenches. And then the only thing I need to do from there is basically add the railings on the sides of both of these thruster trenches. And then from there, we're pretty much good to go. Alright guys, well I'm going to go away and uh, weld these up, uh, do the same for the other side obviously, um, and then add the railings in, and yeah, I'll see you after that's done. Alright guys, well finally it is all complete, and I think it's looking pretty good. Um, the only issue is that we have a Crimson Tormentor that seems to be flying exceptionally close to the base. So, yeah, we're just going to have to keep an eye on him and hopefully he doesn't get within two kilometers of us because if he does, then, yeah, he's going to try and YOLO us and it's going to be a very bad day. I think, honestly, even with the amount of guns that I have on top of this thing, um, you know, so I think I've got like 10 guns on the top of this. Um, if I include, wait, so we got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we got 10 Gatling guns and two missile launchers. So I honestly don't know if we'd be able to do enough damage to that guy before he gets too close to us. So I'm just kind of hoping he doesn't notice us and he just flies right on by. So anyway, um, the landing pad I think is looking really good. Um, I think I'm pretty much done with it for the time being. So the only other thing I kind of want to do, and a lot of people sort of suggested this, is to try and create some sort of additional lighting um so i think maybe what i want to do is make like a cross in the middle of lights that kind of flash like that um so they flash inwards from both sides or actually from all sides um but 
I honestly, I've never set anything up like that before. So I'm going to have to kind of research how to actually do that and then kind of implement that into this landing pad and then also for the landing pad for the pilgrim here. So yeah, that's just um, going to have to be something that I'm yeah going to have to work on a little bit. Um, so I think in the next episode we'll probably work on that and then also what we'll do is we'll take this ship out into space and yeah, we'll just kind of give it a run. Uh, now... Yeah, I'm really concerned about this guy. I don't think, honestly, he's going to get too close to us. But maybe I will cut to the point where he's either gotten too close or he hasn't gotten close enough. So, yeah, we'll just kind of see what happens here. Okay, guys. Well, it seems like he is kind of... I don't know if he's turning or if he's... Um, yeah, kind of going in that direction, maybe. I don't know. It looks to me like he's kind of doing a circle route. So, yeah, he ended up not getting within two kilometers of the base. So, yeah, you know what? I think in the next episode as well, I really need to beef up the defenses on the base because, um, yeah, if one of those guys gets too close to us, then we're, we're kind of doomed. So, I really, really want to get some extra defenses up. So, maybe that will be the first thing we'll do in the episode, um, next episode. Then also what we'll do is we'll figure out the lighting and then if we have time we'll take the Atlas out for a, for its first run into space. But anyway guys, I really hope you enjoyed that episode of Wasteland Survival um, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Wasteland Survival. If you like this content then definitely consider leaving us a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe so that you do not miss another episode. Alright guys, I will see you in the next episode.